What's up? Just taking a walk outside. Or, well, the nature barn trail. <laughs> Sorry I haven't been uploading that much lately. I've been trying to get used to this new work schedule and the last two weeks I've had an, more people pass. One, Bijan was a really good friend. So, uh, this one passage in Philippians was really sticking with me for two weeks. And then, I don't know, God's really been blessing me and showing me that there are good people in the earth, on the earth still, that have sympathy and they're caring, and not everybody is bad. Uh, I'm just going to read the first chapter of Philippians, and then I'll expand on this one passage. Uh, Philippians 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi. I don't know if this is too much in the sun. Here we go. Which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer and thankfulness. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being, confidence, being confident on this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace." For God is my record, and how greatly I long after you all in my bowels of Jesus Christ. In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Paul's boldness in prison. But I would... You should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest unto all the palace and in all other places, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. I had hard rejoicing over the last two weeks, but God gave me a revelation. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that, with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. And then here's the passage. That's passages that have been on my mind. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt too, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. <sighs> Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all. For your furtherance and joy of faith. <sighs> For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I live in the flesh. This is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ which is far better. Nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence I know that I shall abide and continue with you all. For your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Christ, in Jesus Christ. For me, by my coming to you again, the example of Christ, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and nothing terrified by your adversaries, 
which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So, I think one of the biggest things, like, God blesses me. And I recognize it, and I joy in it. I think one of the biggest things for me lately has been, or over the last years, with just how many people that I went to school with and I know that have passed away, and not knowing if I'll see them in heaven. But God has been, like, through these just random acts, He's just been showing me blessings. And it's like, I wish I could share my blessings with these people. But they have to go to it and want it and search Him out for themselves. I guess that's just the hardest thing for me is because I mean I'm not going anywhere hopefully my addiction with fentanyl and heroin my whole life except for the last nine years even though I did have relapses and like People knowing the trauma from my youth and everything like that. People are always like, dude, how do you do it? How are you doing it? And it's like God. And narrow is the gate. That's I've been trying to find an answer. Like, let me just, Matthew 7, one second. Uh, yeah, Matthew 7, 13, and 14. The straight and wide gates. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I mean, you can't force people to save their souls. It sucks. But maybe like Paul and all the other prophets that were used as examples. Like the, begin the reason why I started my channel is I was hoping to create a community with fellowship. I'll get there. I got a passage for that. The Rock. With my channel, I was hoping to get a community and like comfort people that are going through things and have fellowship in Christ. And like all the videos I've done recently, all I had to do was just look back on my videos because I was basically making those videos for myself for when <laughs> another hard time would come. And it's like, Maybe I am just supposed to be an example that, I mean, I have helped some people get clean. It's just not an amount that I would like. Way too many people are dying in their 30s. Like I said, last year I, I quit counting at 15. There was five people over the last two weeks. One was a really good friend. And I know Orphan is purged because I didn't go into the sorrow. I mean, yeah, I'm in grief and sorrow, but I'm not. Being a whipping boy, I'm not putting myself through more guilt, grief, isolation. Sometimes when you're hurt, 
people do that stuff and then they hope somebody with sympathy will see it. And, ooh, little frog. Leopard frog. Uh -huh. Where you going? There you go in the bushes. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, being an example like Paul. Uh, but I am obsessed with anchors because the key for me is staying grounded in the word with God, anchored, being anchored by him. And it's like, it's no coincidence that God calls Peter the rock of the church. And there's even that moment where Peter, Jesus, he's walking on the water and then he sinks. And it's like a rock, a rock is its own anchor. Like you throw it in the water and it's grounded. It stays in its place. It doesn't get tossed to, and, well... It doesn't get tossed to and fro. So, oh, one second. I just have one more passage. Matthew 16, 13, Peter's confession of faith. Uh, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men, who do men say that I, that I the Son of Man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and i'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven the church is the rock fellowship fellow brothers in christ i am going to force myself to go to church tomorrow Oh wow, those are colorful berries. I don't even know what kind these are. And I'm starting to find more, oh, something else just ran. There's so much, like being, God's creation is alive, like, being out, walking in the wild, it really isn't lonely because there's so much going on. Like, yeah, I'll get lonely without human interaction, but, I don't know, I've been trying to find a nice balance of not being on the internet and my phone and having so much of my mind just took over with propaganda that I already know is going on. But yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep making videos and uploading. Like, with my channel, I was hoping it would be a place for people to vent and give like feedback and have like a communication happen organically. I mean, there are people, you know, as long as one person is helped, then, you know, it was all worth it. I just wanted to share why I haven't been uploading much lately. And I don't want people to feel 
worried either. Like, let's see, I'm at 14. I'll probably have to cut this short soon. But it's like, my whole life has been trauma. Like, this is probably the best time of my life ever, this moment. I like, I tried committing suicide. I can't count how many times when I was a teenager, in my early adult years, all the overdoses with drugs. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I was in the hospital, in the psych units, in drug programs, until, 20, until I turned 26 and decided to get clean. And even then, I was stuck on methadone for like five years until I gave it up to God. And then that's what got me off of the methadone. I just, all we can do is pray for people, preach them the gospel, pray that they will submit and surrender to Christ, join the brothers in the fellowship, and find comfort in that. I don't know, it's pride, not wanting to give up to some, give up all of your power to something else. And I don't know, I, <clears throat> it's weird. Like, it seems like people think curses and demons went away when Jesus was resurrected. Like I read the Bible a lot. Like, like literally I'm in it every day reading four different chapters every day. And, or I'll be in like four different books every day reading it. And I'm looking for it. Jesus was the tree and gave us a direct line for us, us Gentiles to be able to even have salvation and give us a direct line to pray to God. And then the curses and demons can be done away with through repentance, self-reflection. But, yeah, I don't know. It seems like people think that once you accept Christ, it's just like, poof, everything's done. Did I not just... Oh no, this is a different one. I was gonna be like, didn't I just walk by this bush? I wonder what kind of berries those are. But, I, and I'm not saying that you can't get rid of demons or curses or anything like that. Everything is possible through Jesus Christ. God really, I mean, <laughs> throughout the whole Old Testament, it's constantly. You became more wicked than your fathers. Rebelled against me. So I will send you into captivity into Babylon. And your cur with your curses... And then, through prophecy, they had hope for the coming of Jesus. But it's not like demons and curses just vanished. Because if that's the case, then explain why everybody is so confounded. It's, oh, it's almost like God did babble again. Like, nobody is on the same page. There's so much division. And I just, I feel bad for the youth. Like, one of the main reasons I want to stick it out is because I know the youth, baby boomers are going to be gone soon. And the youth are going to be looking for answers. 
you know, we're the only generation above them that kind of had life without computers. So we're going to have to mentor these young kids and the youth. I mean, just imagine with all the technology out now and the VR and how much you can just get sucked into simulations. And I'm not saying playing video games is bad or evil. They do put programming in it, be aware of that. And it can make you apathetic a little if you were to feed into certain desires, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it sucks, you can't share blessings. Like, I just wanna grab these people and violently shake them and tell them to just quit killing yourselves, but that's not the way the gate is narrow. <laughs> the gate is narrow, and there's a six billion people on this planet. Imagine six billion people trying to get through this little area. I don't joy. Like that's the trouble. I'm trying to find joy. Because in everything you should be joyful and give thanks to the Lord. I guess Bijan isn't suffering anymore. He was on the right path trying to get clean. But he was an intravenous user so much that he ended up getting a blood infection and it reached his heart, so he died from endocarditis. Which that almost sucks more because he was trying, but it still took him, the drug life. I just wish I could express to the youth, you cannot experiment or try these drugs like it's it's not like it was when I was a kid I'm sorry like I was able to experiment and not worry about getting one pill that would kill you that's full of fentanyl and now these kids they're they get their angst teenage angst they're in, they're rambunctious they want to explore and experiment and they're pressing fentanyl into fake pills so it can come up through the border more easily and then people will buy a pill thinking it's something else and then die from fentanyl <clears throat> it's Russian roulette don't take the chance please like if I would have only listened to those people when I was a kid telling me those drugs are going to lead you into a life of misery I had no clue this many people were going to go. I had no idea. Like, heroin didn't kill people like fentanyl. You would have overdoses from heroin, but it didn't. It wasn't this. And I had no clue this was coming. And if I could change things, I, sh I would. Maybe I would. I don't. Bugs are getting to me. I don't know. I'm just expressing feelings and just talking openly so God bless everybody I'm trying I mean he's not suffering anymore so that's good but that joy and death you know maybe they, maybe my, all my friends will be in heaven when it's my time greeting me. I pray. It just makes me more zealous of getting the gospel out, the furtherance of the gospel. <clears throat>